Hello, I'm Mark Shenton. I'm at the Theatre Royal Stratford East with Ricky Beadle Blair to talk about his new play, Gutted. Ricky, tell me about your new play um, and or what inspired it. Gutted is set in Bermondsey, on Bermondsey Street, where I was brought up. And I really wanted to pay tribute to growing up in Bermondsey and the characters and the personalities. The play itself is about four brothers, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John Prospect, and their mother, Bridie Prospect. And this kind of tight, tough family, the, the family on the estate where dodgy dealings are going on, you know, one of them might be selling meat in the pub, boxes of meat, where did he get it from, back of the lorry stuff. And they're the crown princes of the council estate. And they seem like cock of the walk. They seem like they've got it, they seem like they've got swagger. They seem a bit scary in a sexy way. But underneath all of that bravado, they have these complex, softer human emotions and secrets and lies and desires and yearnings that you wouldn't expect them to have. You, you write very layered plays, don't you? There's a lot going on in them. Yeah. Um, if you could give me a, a very brief summary of the play. Well, they've got Matthew, who is coming out of rehab, and he was a um, first division footballer playing for Millwall, which is, is below Premier League, for those who don't know. And he comes out of rehab after having a mysterious meltdown, and he is resolving to tell the truth about everything, which, of course, in any family creates... Anybody knows once somebody gets drunk at Christmas and starts telling the truth, all hell breaks loose. He's not drunk, he's very sober, and is telling the truth. And that cascades into all their stories. Was there a specific moment of inspiration that made you think to put these poor these characters on a play page? I like to look at things I don't understand. So I really wanted to look at a family that I wouldn't let my sister marry into and then find a way to love them. Whenever I find myself judging people, I want to inhabit their space. I want to find what I have in common with people and usually do that with humour and with Romance, the play is very romantic and it builds to quite big romantic scenes and I want to find the romance in the people that I'm rejecting. Even as it's quite a harsh portrait of them. Yeah, it's a harsh portrait in, in as much as it's a real portrait, but I think it's a loving portrait. I, I think my, my job as a director is to really bring out the romance in the piece and have people... I want them to be swept away, to be elevated at certain points by their love of these characters that they don't necessarily think they could ever have anything in common with. I know that my job is to entertain, though. I want people to come and have fun and, you know, and sit back in a seat and laugh and cry and be transported. And I'd like them to be exhausted in the way a day at the fun fair is exhausting. You've said that this is a play you've waited all your life to, to write. Uh, why is that so? Well, my first plays were written for my friends at um, free school in um, Bermondsey. I went to Bermondsey Lampost Free School. A lot of them, because it was this experimental school, a lot of them were kids who were excluded from school or had problems. And I was brought up in a council estate with kids on the rob. And, and it's part of my world. And when I was like 10 or 11, I started to really want to write socially conscious plays. But I, I didn't have the vision to see into the families the way I can now. And so it, it, a, it was a process I began then, writing things for my friends to act in. And so now I can consolidate that, consolidate my life experience, my world experience, and still channel the Bermondsey language, which I love, the Bermondsey humour that I love, and, um, and really pay tribute to the characters with more wisdom now than I had then. So it's, it's tough, it's gritty, but it's, but it's also romantic, you said. I'm essentially a romantic comedy writer and very few of my pieces don't have that. So I like to write that. that I, and I was very affected growing up watching all the black and white stuff on TV and all the kind of wisecracking, fast talking, Hollywood, Warner Brothers movies. I wanted to do that kind of writing. And um, so to me, I, I can never escape really the romantic comedy genre. In the end, my characters essentially are looking for love and seizing love where they can find it and trying to keep their sense of humour in the worst uh, circumstances. So why, why should people come and see this play? I think it's a play where you're going to have so much conversation afterwards in the car or on the tube or walking home. You're going to talk about the different strands and you're going to have everyone's going to have a different take on what is actually going on there. Because like the set, it's a hall of mirrors and it depends on what you're looking at. Theatre is a living beast. If you come to the theatre, you get to walk with panthers, you get to be in it. You don't get to 
you don't get, it's, watching a TV is wonderful, but it's like going through, a, you know, it's like going through a magazine. You can look at it all, but it's not going to move. It's safe. It's there. It's behind that screen. It's TV. But with theatre, the actors could leave the stage at any moment and be amongst you. And you hopefully will feel transported. It's such a short distance. You're in the room with the sweat and you're in the room with the tears. There's nothing like it.